All right, so this is going to be the final part of the series. Um, it's going to be a sort of different but really important part. I'm going to show you how to UV unwrapper, which is the first time I've shown that. I have recently discovered a technique that I really like. And I'm going to show you how to export your model to Unity with minimal errors and how to solve them if you come across them. Which I've come across a lot in my time, but I will try and go over the most basic errors. But for the moment, I'm just modeling her hand, which is essentially me just creating a square and creating four different sections for the, the fingers and extruding. I will link a video in the description if you'd like to l know more about the hand creating process. I have a full video just for that. I'm also just experimenting with adding a few final details to her clothing. I decide not to go with the cuff because it kind of messes up her animation. Um, and then I'm just adjusting the hands a little bit. I'll be adding a band-aid just to break up the symmetry on both sides um, because it's cute. And a little bit of shade to the shorts and just these few final things that really make her feel alive. And here is where it starts. Alright, so here I'm going to be unwrapping her materials and exporting them to a UV map. This is extremely useful in a lot of cases and if you don't want to be using materials in Unity you can use a UV map with this method. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open a second window and you're going to want to open up the UV image editor. Which you can see me doing here. I've slowed it down a little bit to make it just a little bit more clear. You're going to want to create a new image and create a large square. You want to make sure it's big because if it's small you'll get blurry textures and that's generally not, not what you want. So you get a black box and you're going to want to go to your model, go to edit mode, select all of her and press U and smart UV project. You can copy what I have here. Um, uh, these numbers, I'm not entirely sure what they mean. I know that island margin determines how much space is between each piece, but I've got a lot of parts here, so I want them to all have as much space as they can get. So here is essentially the layout for your unwrapped UV model. Um, if you don't really understand it, that's okay. Just be aware that it's basically like the Christmas wrapping on the box. You just laid it all flat so that you can export your materials to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the render or the scene tab with the camera. You're going to want to go down where it says bake and you're going to open it. You're going to make sure full render is selected and then you're going to want to bake it. What this does is it takes every effect that is on the model Oh, you have to press new again because apparently it didn't, didn't do it. But make sure the black is underneath the unwrapped parts. What this will do will take all the colors you've applied, all the, uh, all the effects, and it'll bake it right on to your UV map. Usually you have to go in by hand and paint these. But with this baking method, you uh, the machine basically does it for you. The problem, though, is that it's not always perfect, and you usually have to go in and kind of fix it. I found... Yes, see by her legs, there's a little bit of blue. It's a little bit of messed up stuff. Like, you don't really want that. So how do you fix that? Well, I will show you my method. You're going to want to press this little icon here so you can see which polys are being selected as you select on the model. As you can see right here, this poly is intercepting some of the blue from her shorts, and that's why a little bit of blue has gotten into it. And this is an easy fix. You're just going to want to shrink it so that it's only touching the skin. If you kind of think of it like a palette, you just don't want the polys touching any other colors or they will go into that poly on her skin. And so with this method, I haven't figured out how to have a more efficient way quite yet. But for the moment, if you are dedicated and you really want a UV map, this will work out just fine. Just make sure and go through your whole model and see if there are any overlapping colors, any, you know, any weirdness. If anyone in the comments knows how to do this better, please do let me know. This is the only way I can think of right now. You're going to want to be extremely thorough with this, though. Um, it will happen everywhere, especially around areas of high concentration polys. You know, the eyes, the cheeks, anywhere there's a lot of polys all mushed together, it's bound to happen. It's really bad on the face because it's super obvious in, uh, in Unity. Um, but I think it's worth it in the end because it, it's legitimately the, the materials that you just laid down and they're 
they will be put right into a UV map. And so I'm going to skip ahead uh, after I found and displaced all of the all the janky polygons. I'll get back to you in just a sec. Okay, so I think I might have deleted this part in recording, so I'm going to add it real quick here. You need to save your UV map as an image before you can apply it to a model in Unity. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quickly. Uh, you're going to want to go to Image, and then you're going to want to go to Save as Image. And then you want to give it a name. You, I follow mine with UV map to distinguish it. And then once that's saved, you can use that UV map for your model. So next I'm going to be showing you how to take this model and put it into Unity. Okay, and so here is the part where we're actually going to take it into Unity. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure her location rotation and scale are all uh, you know on par they're all zero there's no weird there's no weirdness going on so you're gonna like make all those numbers zero then you're gonna want to go into object mode press control a and then select all three and they should apply these zero coordinates to all of them to make sure your model doesn't have any weird spacing or <sighs> rotations on her after that you're going to want to export as an FBX, you're going to want to give it a good name, and then you're going to want to click Selected Object. That way it doesn't export the lamp or the camera, which can ruin an FBX in my opinion. You just want the model. You're going to want to open up a file that you can test your model in and make sure it's all spick and span, because there will be problems with it. 98% of the time there are, <laughs> in my life at least. And you're going to want to find your, um, your FBX, and you're just going to want to drag it in or import it. And so it will import sideways. Um, I'm not sure if that's always the case. I'm not really sure how to stop that from happening. So if there's anyone in the comments that can tell me how to stop that from happening, I'd be very grateful. But for the moment, we can just rotate her. You'll just want to rotate her up so that she's standing. Or to 90, you can put in the inspector. And um, the first thing, the very first thing I do is I'm going to check for holes. Um, in Blender, when I work, a lot of the times ver uh, polys can be flipped around and they make an invisible square in the model. Uh, I actually got lucky this time and there weren't any holes, which is not what I wanted because I wanted to show you guys how to do it. So fear not, I will show you what happens if you get a hole and how to fix it. Yeah, you'll want to uh, check, especially, especially um, like the crotch area, the bottom of the shoes, the eyes, um, where there are lots of creases. Some weird, funky geometry can cause holes. Lots of things can cause holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole. This is the same method you would use to fix a hole. You go to Shading and UV, and you click Flip Direction. And that's how you would change a hole that has been created. But you'll see here that when I, when I import it with the hole that I just created, you'll see what happens. Now, isn't that lovely? That's, yeah, that's something I want in my game right there. Yes, sir. So if you, you find this problem in any of the models you've imported to Unity, don't freak out. It's actually super easy to fix. You just go into Blender and you click that poly and you press flip direction. Another tool to help you with this that I recently found out is you can turn on back face culling. And what this will do is if you have a face that's flipped inside out, say this one, back face culling will tell you before you get into Unity. So I just generally keep this on and it helps me catch most of the flipped verts. So then you'll want to take your exported, newly exported model back into Unity. You'll import it. You'll drag it in. And it should be fixed, just like that. Um, if it isn't, it usually means that you need to fix the way the polygon is structured. Sometimes if it has five edges, it doesn't work. So uh, just experiment with playing with the polygon itself to see if that fixes it. But that's pretty rare. So here we're going to be importing the UV map that you saved. 
it should look like a really ugly um, image of a spaghetti. Um, then you'll want to take it <coughs> and you'll want to drag it on to your model. You notice it won't change too much, but it might get a little bit lighter because now it's being affected by Unity Lights a little bit differently because it's a UV map and not materials. You'll know that it worked if you see that the materials tabs have been replaced with the UV map. And if you've done a, a pretty good job, you should barely able be able to tell the difference. I hope that this works out really well for you guys. It's worked really well for me. The last thing I want to mention is um, creating a video about rigging and animating. I actually do have one recorded right now. I'm going to upload it soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's been a pretty hot request, so I'm excited to share it with you guys. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. See you next time.